put them all together. Oh, that's fun. Okay, good morning. So today is March. What is today? March 20... 27th. 27th. Thank you. Today is March 27th. We're covering the uh, conception vessel. <clears throat> um, very briefly, I'd like to go over the plan moving forward. So the current assignments um, and their due dates will remain the same. If you have any questions or issues around the papers, please let me know. And since we need to maintain scheduled class hours to fulfill our accreditation requirements, um, I'm going to continue to record um, some more videos to make up the class hours that we missed when I was sick, and that's going to be predominantly the, um, well, actually, it's going to be the stomach channel. I'll finish those videos and upload them um, by the evening of Saturday, so tomorrow night I'll have them up by. And what you'll do is you'll simply type up a 250-word summary um, <clears throat> on those points. I have specific questions that I will upload to Canvas as well as email to you. Um, to answer for the summary, so it's not just like this very loose, uh, vague assignment. I've also uploaded a, a video on uh, the Heart Mind Lecture, just something a little bit um, uh, that relates to the course uh, and the course outcomes, but also might help to provide some uh, context for point selection and how you view your patients. So. Um, that is already uploaded to Canvas, and if you have any trouble watching that, let me know, and uh, we'll make arrangements to make it easier for you. So you'll just um, provide a 250-word uh, summary on that, and I'll email some more specific directions as well. And then, um, Friday the 3rd, we're also going to meet uh, via Zoom um, and possibly on the 10th. And on those core classes, I want to focus mostly on how to take this information that we've covered in the class, uh, which is quite voluminous. There's a lot written about the points. I mean, as you can see how thick Deadman's book is and many other books talking about the points. But um, we're going to talk about how to apply that <clears throat> to prospective patients. And this can might dovetail a little bit with uh, what we're covering in the um, treatment planning class. All right, um, if you're unable to attend any of the real-time Zoom class meetings, they will be recorded. Um, but if you're not here, if I don't see you on the side here as present, then um, you'll also have to write up another um, summary on uh, the points that were covered. And if you have any obligations that interfere with online class attendance, would you please let me know in advance, like child care, elder care, or anything else? You know, obviously everyone's schedules are a little bit upended, and I understand that, so let me know. <clears throat> um, and um, if you have any other questions about any of the course material or um, the course, uh, please, by all means, um, send me an email. This would also, uh, be useful in uh, coordinating the discussion on the last two classes uh, regarding integrating this information um, to work with your patients. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so let's start with the conception vessel. Hopefully you all still have access to Canvas okay. Um, I've uploaded the notes. If any of you have trouble uh, accessing them, please let me know. All right, starting with um, Actually, let me start one second here. Okay. So conception vessel is very interesting along with GV. The character depicts a human being carrying a bamboo pole with a load on each end. And so the left side is the person, the right side is the bamboo pole with a load hanging on each end. And um, according to Dennis Wilmot and popular thinking, this has a lot to do with the burden um, that we have, the burdens that we have to endure just by being alive. Um, you know, the care and feeding and maintenance of our body requires some kind of effort. And if we want to even go beyond just the basic care and feeding, if we want to, uh, you know, look well and uh, be fit, 
you know, just beyond the basic needs of the human body, which are food and water and shelter and air, you know, that requires quite a bit of resources. It requires a bit of time and effort. And just all of the things that we have to bear physically, uh, making sure our food is good, making sure our water is good. Sometimes it's not. We have to deal with the elements, right? We get sick. Um, psychologically, of course, that takes a great deal of care. So um, all the emotions that we experience that we have to bear, these can be very... Um, these can weigh us down. This can take a lot of energy uh, to navigate and maintain. Um, and that's just, uh, and that's just the basics, right? We're not even talking about, you know, how do we then develop ourselves even further? So, you know, if we want to develop our bodies and exercise and work out and uh, develop ourselves in that way, that takes a lot of work. If we want to develop our minds or our spirits and our consciousness, that takes effort, right? So it takes a lot of effort and work just to be. Um, and then it takes even more effort and work if you want to thrive, right? So it takes a lot of effort to maintain our body, mind, spirit. <clears throat> um, another interpretation is uh, that bamboo pole holding the weights on each side refers to um, needing to maintain a state of balance. Now we're not meant to stand still. We're not meant to be still and be stagnant in life, right? If you think about CV as dealing with issues around accumulation, which we'll get to later. Think about how do we move through life and bear the burdens of life and also maintain our balance, right? Our left-right balance, our forward-backward balance, our balance between above and below. And so all of these are metaphors for all of the influences, uh, influences <clears throat> that can um, stress us psychologically, weigh us down physically. Again, we might get sick, we might get injured, um, we might deal with emotional issues, emotional shocks, traumas, challenges, right? So how do we, how do we stay centered and grounded and maintain that upright posture that allows us to bear the burdens, right? <clears throat> and by the way, if you, um, if you guys have any questions, um, let me open up the chat box here. And uh, the, yes, I am recording the lecture and the summaries will be due um, by the last class date. Um, and if you missed the last class date, then it'll be due within two days. Okay, and I'll get more into that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so maintaining balance, balance between yin and yang, balance uh, between heaven and earth, right? And so what is that um, fulcrum of balance, which is the human being, right? And it's also our mind. So we have to use our minds uh, to navigate all of uh, life's issues and life's burdens. <clears throat> all right. So um, a couple of things about the channel of the CV. So it's interesting to me that, you know, we're familiar with the part of the conception vessel that comes up the anterior median line, right, from the perineum ending here. Um, it's interesting that there's also uh, a complementary uh, governing vessel channel internally that originates in the lower abdomen. And there's a second branch that ascends the anterior portion of the body, passing through the umbilicus, the heart, the throat, and it winds around the mouth as well and ends uh, just below um, uh, the middle of the eyes. So I think that that's really interesting that also for CV has a similar internal branch along the posterior part of the body. So there's this interesting um, dynamic that's mutually transformative, mutually supportive, and mutually complementary relationship between the two, which I think literally and metaphorically, you can't really have one without the other. So anytime we're talking about CV, you need to also be thinking about complementary GV points that might balance and support uh, the patient. That's not to say that they always need to be done simultaneously in every treatment. You know, it's not like if every time I do a CV point, I have to do a GV point and vice versa. That's not the case. But you also want to be thinking about yin yang because if you're supporting one aspect of a patient, you also have to be looking at the other aspect, whether that's yin or yang or vice versa. So I think that that's interesting that um, that both of these things occur together, and this is why I think qigong 
and meditative processes, especially Qigong, where you're right, you're touching the tongue to the roof of your mouth, you're you're completing that microcosmic orbit, is so very important um, while you're meditating, because that's internally you're creating a literally a physical channel for balance. All right, so let's briefly go over the um, body, mind, spirit uh, summary of functions. So on the body level, um, I think you're all pretty familiar with how it is uh, very nourishing in terms of the chi and the blood. Uh, the CV is great for moistening and lubricating via the blood and the body fluids. It helps to regulate the yin humors. And when I say humors, I mean the fluids right? The blood, the jin ye, the jing. This includes also the hormones and um, things like mucus, saliva, the, the fluids around the eye. You know, there's the old saying about the jin ye, the, the jin or the fluids around the eye and the ye or the fluids in the eye. That's a nice way of looking at the thin and thick fluids. It also stores the blood and the jing essence. And it also helps us to control the sphincter muscles. Um, so the sphincter muscles are anything that like squeezes shut. So this would be like the mouth, right? That puckers, um, the eyes, right? Uh, the urethra and the anus. So these are all the sphincter muscles that are under the domain of the conception vessel. And it also helps to regulate obviously the chi in all three jaws. So similarly on a mental level, <clears throat> um, if you think about what lubricates and moistens and nourishes on a mental emotional level, you know, obviously the blood physically has a lot to do with this and plays um, a major part in, um, in it says, uh, I can't remember exactly where it was quoted, it might be the Great Compendium, that blood um, cushions our experience of the blows of life. So we can experience the, blow, how is it? Um, we experience the blows of life with comfort and grace, right? So it allows things to kind of like, bounce off of us, roll off our backs, you know, no big deal. Like someone bumps into us, you know, we can let it go. If we're very uh, blood deficient and somebody bumps into us, we may feel easily violated. You know, somebody cuts in front of you in traffic uh, and, you know, and you give them the finger, you know, maybe you're a little blood deficient, maybe a little excess heat in there, right? So maybe we want to uh, max a few more CV points and maybe sedate a couple of GV points. But, um, this is what helps us to uh, be emotionally rugged and resilient, right? The body fluids and the blood that nourish the flesh, right? That give us shape and form. So we're not so easily penetrated, right? Um, and you can be very thin and slight, but be very sufficient in blood. So physically and psychologically, you know, you're able to accommodate life's um, discomforts, okay? So CV, blood, body fluids, they have a lot to do with our ability to feel comfortable in our skin, right? So psychologically, this is really helpful to help us to feel comfortable in who we are, right? Um, CV as one of the eight extraordinary vessels, um, it's called the vessel of bonding. So if you think about uh, the bonding that occurs when the, when, when the baby is very little and the, and the baby lays upon the chest of the mother, right? Um, when you're feeding the baby, when you're holding the baby and their chest is to your chest, right? Their throat and body is to you like this. So they're laying face down on you. You're holding them, right? This is necessary to activate the conception vessel in the child <clears throat> and empowers this um, experience of bonding and connection at a very primal level to help us feel supported, right? When, we're, when the baby's you know, against your chest like this, you feel their heartbeat they feel and hear your heartbeat. They smell you, you smell them, right? This creates a psychological and physical bond um, that's very powerful and, and necessary for us to then experience later on a sense of independence, right? So in the beginning, we have to acknowledge our dependence, like a baby is absolutely, utterly dependent on um, the care and feeding from others, right? And that's why uh, I think maybe the design is to put their, their, to make their shen so powerfully attractive, right? You know, no matter what we're doing, you know, baby comes into the room and then we're all like, right? There, there's, a, there's a quality of attractiveness. And I think that there's something about that on a deep level 
this deep connection, this primal connection to uh, the inner child and um, the child within ourselves and the child that we see, right? That, that helps to empower this bonding because we don't wanna, you know, waking up in the middle of the night to feed the baby is not convenient, right? Taking care of children is not convenient. It's not always comfortable. So it's important for the survival of our species that there be a powerful sense of bonding. Otherwise, we're like, eh, I'll feed them later. You know, eh, I don't feel like getting up right now. I'll just sleep, right? We don't want to do that. So this is the vessel of, bond of bonding that uh, empowers the balance between dependence and independence in our future life. And, it help and that, when that's established, uh, really helps us to manage longstanding psychological stresses and helps us to um, better... Uh, deal with pain and discomfort later in life because we know that we have the resources to bear this burden, right? Because I know I've had that in the past. So people who haven't had that in the past, orphans, people whose um, parents were very distant, there was very little physical attention, um, maybe they were bottle fed uh, without much heart involvement in the bottle feeding, you know, maybe there's not a lot of holding. So people like this may need a, a additional support, especially with needling and moxing, uh, these CV points to help reestablish that sense of comfort and um, being comfortable with our dependence, right? Because I don't provide all my own food. I have to go out and get it. I don't provide all my own water and fluids. I have to go out and get that. I have to bring that into my body, right? <clears throat> I am very dependent on the planet for my sustenance. I'm very dependent on others for my psychological well-being and my spiritual happiness. Um, but can I also simultaneously have a sense of balance with that where I'm also experiencing a certain level of independence where I rely on them in an appropriate way but also am able to stand on my own and provide certain things for myself. Um, and this is what we use our mental faculties for. This is what we use our physical body for. I can go out and I can chop the wood to make the fire to cook my food, or I can, you know, use my body to make a living, to earn enough money to go out and buy my food and so forth, right? So there's a certain quality of um, independence and dependence that are always in a state of balance. We're never one more than the other. <clears throat> and this is empowered by the fluids in the blood predominantly. And then this, of course, nourishes the Shen, the spirit, which is gives us a sense of like who I really am. You know, am I just this body? Do I identify as a man? Do I identify as an American? Do I identify as someone my age, right? Do I identify with my physical characteristics? Um, to some degree, yes, but is that the sum total of, of what we identify with? Hopefully not. Hopefully that contributes to your identity, but your, your identity isn't dependent on that. So there's also a sense of like, what are the inner qualities uh, that I carry that help me be me. So this is also being clear and uh, comfortable um, with those qualities. You know, you may say, well, uh, you know, this is the body I got. It's not the one I wanted. You know, I wanted different hair. I wanted blue eyes. You know, I wanted to be, you know, to look this way or that way. But guess what? You know, this is the nose I got. This is the way it is, right? Um, you know, maybe you've acquired scars or uh, experiences in life that have, you know, in your eyes disfigured you. Um, can you, you know, relax into that? Can you be comfortable with that? Maybe you were born with a congenital condition. Um, can you be comfortable with that? I remember um, uh, the boyfriend of a friend of mine uh, that she was with for many years, he was born with a half of an arm. And um, he showed no self-consciousness around this. And he had developed a capacity to use uh, this half of an arm better than almost I can use my left hand. I mean, it was extraordinary what he could do. Um, also, one of our patients in the clinic uh, many years ago by one of our students, he went on to create this movie about himself. They were actually, this movie was made about him and he, based on an autobiography called King Gimp. Highly recommend you uh, checking this out. This guy really, um, he ended up painting, he could only hold a, to, uh, a paintbrush with his teeth and he ended up painting these incredible, <laughs> incredibly expressive pieces. Uh, and he managed very well with his limitations, right? But for him, that was just what is. So can we be comfortable 
with our isness, right? Can we be comfortable in our own skin and feel complete? And then beyond that, can we then love ourselves, right? Because lo uh, blood and shen are what the heart used to empower love, love for self, love for others. And, you know, this is the mediumship of our self-expression, okay? So one of the ways I compare CV and GV is um, thinking about uh, CV, especially since it has so much to do with the fluids, is almost like being filled up from below. So like almost like you're um, like this deflated, um, you know, like those uh, toy uh, where like you, you pump them up and then they kind of like, um, almost like these, uh, like they're called weevils. That's right, weevils wobble, but they don't fall down. So it's like you're pumping up this, this structure from below. You're filling it up with the fluids of the blood and body fluids, right? And the jing ye and the jing. And this kind of like lifts us up from the earth. Again, CV is more yin, it has to do with the, you know, things that we get from the earth. And we're filling up and maintaining our fullness and our presence and our structure, right? Where GV for me is almost like like uh, like a puppet being pulled up from a string that's tied to the top of our head that helps to maintain this state of like erect structure, right? I'm standing tall, I'm standing straight, right? It's about um, being able to be uh, to not just bear the burdens of life, but to actually like be in a position where I can now move forward, right? I can spring a young like into the future, right? So consequently, CV also has a lot to do with the past, GV uh, more so with the future, right? Okay, I've got this thing that's, pro that's provided and empowered by CV. Now what do I do with it? How do I be functional in the world? CV is more about the form. And maybe that's why there's so many uh, alarm points or front move points on CV. <clears throat> So um, let's start with uh, some of the points. And I don't think I mentioned it, but obviously I think you already know this, that, um, that CV is the C of yin and GV is the C of yang, right? Um, oh, one more thing I wanted to add about CV is uh, from a more Taoist perspective, and this comes to me via Jeffrey Yuen, is that um, according to the Taoists, imprinted in our Jing and mediated by the Chiang Mai uh, is our sense of curriculum. That is like, I was born into a certain family at a certain time in a certain country in a certain culture with these physical characteristics and these mental emotional characteristics. And that sort of, it helps to generate this um, resonance, which then radiates out into the world. And then the world, like radar, radiates something back. And that is what helps to empower our curriculum. You could say fate um, and destiny combined, right? Fate's what happens to you that's outside of your choice. Uh, destiny is created by what you choose to do with what happens to you. <clears throat> and so um, from the Taoist view, uh, sudden events with seemingly no cause or like um, physical conditions, like all of a sudden, like you become sick with something at some point in your life um, where people can um, really, no one can figure out like why that happened. What we would call them as I think is like idiopathic diseases. Um, so the Taoists might, might suggest that it's possible that this was sort of what we would call now genetically programmed into your curriculum, that this was like programmed into your life, maybe even at conception, right? When, when heaven and earth meet and there's this explosion of which life emerges, and in, this, in the microcosmic case, your life, uh, and that develops in utero, then um, your curriculum is becoming established. Maybe some parts of it are already set as soon as the, uh, the egg and the sperm meet and fertilize right? This new dynamic, this new chi emerges out of the meeting of yin and yang, right? That's the three that emerges from the two. And at that point, you know, this is the genetic material that you have to deal with, that you have to work with. And obviously these are the, you could say, 
because they didn't know about genes then, you could say these are the influences that come from uh, the people that brought you into this life. And then there's also the influences of the people that raised you, right? So they're infusing their yin and yang upon you as you're, as you're being raised. And that this contributes to your curriculum in life. So sometimes um, one way to use CV and GV points is if um, you're dealing with things that um, seem very primal or primordial in nature or that are very ancestral in origin, um, you know, things that maybe run in your family, maybe your mother's side, CV, maybe your father's side, GV, although it doesn't have to be broken down that way quite literally, but it can be. Um, or things that like, you know, run through your lineage, right? Um, because that has a resonance, right? If you look for, look at people with a Scottish lineage, you know, the, the way they, you know, their characteristics, the way they resonate is very different than say, like, you know, people I know, uh, this one gentleman I know from um, uh, Zaire, right? So, um, you know, uh, we have, we all have, you know, right? California is different than Maryland even, right? So, you know, we all have like our own vibe. So CV and GV can be looked at in terms of um, something that's very primal that runs in your family, that runs in your lineage. Again, you know, the eight extraordinaries have a lot to do with the Jing. And so how I decide to choose uh, basically in the beginning, like between CV and GV points is there's a couple things. One is, is it's based on the location of the problem, um, based on the nature of the problem, right? Uh, maybe by palpation, right? And maybe something about the substances, um, right? So, you know, palpation obviously is gonna be a big deal. Also, you know, which um, official or organ system is involved, right? These are all things that are important to consider uh, when, you're, um, when you're choosing one point over another. Right. Okay, so let's start with the points. Any questions so far? Okay, what's the relationship between the kidneys and producing Jin Ye in the CV channel? Well, um, let's see. Um, well, the CV channel doesn't really produce anything the way that the um, organ systems do. What I would say is that CV and GV are more about the regulation of the fluids and the regulation of the substances, in this case, the Jin Ye, by virtue of its um, connections to uh, the other um, Zhang Fu organ systems. So they basically um, provide or are a, um, a resource for, right, uh, for, the, um, for the officials, right? So they're the oceans of Yin, CV, and Yang, GV, that feed the rivers of the primary meridians and also um, serve as the sort of like, um, I would say, not the source for, but they, they help to regulate, the flow of chi through the CV helps to regulate uh, the functions of the official. So it, it doesn't, like that old commercial, it doesn't create the Jin Ye, it just helps make it better, right? So it doesn't, um, generate the Jin Ye, it just helps the kidneys um, uh, manage the fluids, right? It provides the resources of yin chi and, um, and blood and chi to help the kidneys and the other organ systems do what they do. So in the Nanjing, then came this idea that um, these were like the reservoirs for when uh, the primary meridians are uh, deficient. Right, so like they can be the when kidney is weak, when spleen and stomach are weak, they can draw upon the CV or GV to utilize uh, to get what they need. Right. Similarly, if they're in repletion, if they're in excess, they absorb the overflows. Right. So hopefully that helps. <clears throat> All right. So you can look at CV points in basic categories, which I've listed on the notes in. Um, uh, page four, so there's, I kind of break them down, you know, relatively arbitrarily, but you can look at these in terms of the Jiao. So there's CV one through eight, 
there's CD 9 through 15, there's CD 16 through 21, and then, uh, you know, 21, 22 through 24. <clears throat> so CD 1 through 8, this is really more about the seat of deep nourishment and power, right? This is what provides the resources for us to, um, to bear the suffering and the pain and the joys and the ups and downs and all that life has to offer. Um, the Jiao are defined or described <clears throat> in different ways. So the lower Jiao is considered to be like a sluice ditch, which I think is a very interesting term, but it's basically like a drainage ditch, okay? Like a culvert, right? This works with the liver, the kidneys, the intestines, the bladder, and the original source Yuan Shi. Most of the lower Dantian CV points are said to tonify um, the Yang Qi and the blood. And this is where the Jin Ye body fluids and also the Wei Qi, Wei defensive Qi, is extracted from the turbid, which they sometimes call impure, but I don't like that term. I like turbid, the thick, cloudy fluids, right? And this is the origins of um, our most fundamental energetic protections, ironically enough, okay? And then CV 9 through 15, or excuse me, and then the middle jiao is um, considered, uh, one term I heard is called the maceration chamber. <laughs> so maceration um, refers to like the action of what your teeth do when you chew, right? They macerate, they, there's like this grinding process. Um, I kind of look at it more like a cauldron, you know, where the soup of, uh, of everything is kind of combined uh, to generate, um, uh, all of our resources of nourishment, right? So I think of it more as like a cauldron. And then the upper jowl is considered to be like a mist. And if you think about the nature of the fluids, actually looking in the, at the fluids, you don't want the fluids that are like those in the lower jowl to be in the upper jowl, right? I mean, the, the thickest we want to get up here is maybe some thick mucus. We certainly don't want anything um, as thick as something like feces. Oh my gosh, right? Uh, and you certainly don't want anything like that in the in the middle jowl. You know, you want that to be more like a thin soup, okay? And then you want this to be more like a mist that's coating the inside of the sinuses and the mucous membranes, uh, coating the ears, coating the throat, right? That allows for things to move and function easily, okay? <clears throat> and then CB uh, 9 through 15 is more about processing understanding, things we might consider to be like the mental faculties. 16 through 21, you could say we're starting to get into a sense of knowing. We're dealing more with the influence of the heart and the lungs, so maybe something about intuition, a sense of deep knowing inside yourself about things. Um, and then 22 through 24, or maybe even 21 through 24 is up more into the head now. And this is more into the most young part of the body. And so this could be said to be like the seat of illumination and integration or reintegration, where you've digested something that's integrated, that becomes integrated in your body. And now um, you have time to think about it and ponder it. And you bring that I, those ideas up to the heart and the lungs. And then you combine that with this inner sense of knowing. Right, and I think it's interesting that the heart and the kidneys are combined together via the Xiao Yin, right? So that's um, <clears throat> so you're combining a quality of uh, um, wisdom, right? To you're applying your wisdom to what you know, and that combined gives you a sense of illumination, like oh, aha, okay, now I get it. Now I really know um, how to build my practice. Okay, now I know what it is about me that's you know my strengths and virtues um oh these are the things i love okay now i don't just have these things i love and these things that i know now i have this deep embodied sense of okay how do i merge these two to bring them out into the world in a way that's fulfilling to me oh, okay right i go to acupuncture school okay all right any questions about that so far would you use cv and upper kidney points together yes Absolutely, and we'll get to that as well um, as we get to the points in the upper part of the body. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so starting with CV1, um, let's see, let me just check something here. Okay, so starting with CV1, meeting of yin, uh, 
according to JR, this was a point that it was a first aid point for drowning. Uh, I go to the beach a lot. Uh, and, um, and for those of you who go to the beach or who are around water, uh, if you come across someone who is being pulled out of the water uh, after they've nearly drowned, please do not treat this point on them. Okay, not a good idea. All right, um, so the way I would really look at this point is more in terms of um, the metaphorical aspects as well as the physical aspects. So metaphorically, someone may actually feel in their life like they are drowning, like they're so overwhelmed. Um, obviously, this is the first point that you do on the CVGV block. Um, so uh, I think these are underutilized points. Um, although CVGV blocks, I've probably encountered maybe three in the 22 years that I practice, uh, going on 23 years. Uh, I've only done like I've only done them three times. There was a fourth time I wasn't comfortable, so I farmed it out to a female practitioner. Um, so this is very rare, very rare. Uh, but you may have uh, a practice where, you know, the types of people you see, um, you know, suffer from this more commonly. <clears throat> so this obviously is, you know, at the perineum, which is at the very root of our torso, the yin of the yin of our torso. And um, this is a very deep point. So if you do needle it, um, it's, uh, I would use an inch and a half needle because it's, it's about 10 fen, eight to 10 fen, uh, beneath the skin. So you're, you're having to penetrate a little bit more deeply. Um, and this is a good point to um, just either have the patient massage beforehand or with a gloved hand, you know, obviously letting them know what you're doing, explaining this all beforehand, you know, massage the area so you can have them massage it, um, which is actually even better because that helps them to activate the point and awaken the point and um, allows the needle to penetrate more easily. I don't know if any of you have ever had it, uh, done. Um, a bunch of us practiced on each other when we were in, like, I think just before we graduated or just after we graduated. Um, and it's a powerful point. And it's actually a very refreshing point. It was not unpleasant. Um, and it does really give you a boost of chi. You, you know when you get the point, but the, it wasn't like a zing. It was more like this intense um, push, like pressure. Very nice point to, to treat. So, so this is actually, someone mentioned, you know, could you uh, combine this with upper kidney points? And I would say, yes, this is actually a point that's um, sometimes done with um, CV24, or excuse me, uh, kidney 24. <clears throat> excuse me one second. So yeah, you can combine this with kidney 24 um, to release a very buried, uh, drowned spirit right? Someone who feels very overwhelmed. <clears throat> um, on the physical level, this is really good for uh, prolapses and leakages, especially in women, but also for <coughs> men too. Um, you know, uh, urine dribbling, uh, prolapse of the, of the vagina, prolapse of the uterus, um, uh, blood vessels that are um, uh, weakening, right? So these are really good for strengthening the lower orifices. People who have a hard time um, holding in, uh, going to the bathroom, right? So there's a lot of like urgency uh, and diarrhea, things falling out from the lower orifices. And this is really good for any of that. Um, you would not leave the needle in. So this is just a quick tonification. <clears throat> this is not with retention. So you basically put the needle in, you go in slowly, you get the chi, you tonify, and you remove. Yeah, and it's not a painful point. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I've just launched a little poll, so you can take a moment to do that. All right, and with CV2, <clears throat> excuse me, um, CV2 is a reunion point with the kidney, the liver, and the spleen. Um, this is um, this is a really great point for uh, treating any bleeding problems. This is said to contain, help contain the blood. Um, to regulate urination, 
um, to warm and invigorate the kidneys. So this is a nice point if you if you can get to it. Um, you may need to use a little bit of water to push down any of the hair that's in that area. This is a really nice point to moxa. Um, this is also um, what's known as the gathering point for the three leg yin sinew meridians of the kidney, liver, and spleen. So um, we'll get into this in the ninth trimester class, but um, certain movements uh, that create a lot of pain with the patient, like you know, crossing your legs, like bring, like a figure four, like bringing your right ankle over your left knee. Um, different movements like uh, pain upon uh, standing for periods of time. Also, or excuse me, sitting for periods of time, not standing. Um, someone sits for a period of time and they start to get a lot of pain, especially pain in their legs or maybe low back, right? Um, you would do the sinew meridian treatments uh, for like the spleen or like the liver or the, or the kidneys. And this is a point that you would do uh, as a part of that treatment protocol. So this is really helps um, the leg yin sinew meridian. So if there's a lot of issues around the legs, a lot of bleeding in the legs, um, uh, cold in the legs, cold affecting the lower jowl, uh, cold in the uterus. Um, this is good for bladder problems. Uh, it might feel cold upon palpation, right? Uh, this is a great point to support um, uh, as well, prolapses, uterine prolapses, hemorrhages, um, uh, problematic vaginal discharges, dysmenorrhea, dribbling, um, or even urine retention or spermatorrhea. This is a really great point for all of those things. Um, you know, especially if it's like really long standing. That's often when I do CV2 the most is like, this is really chronic. Um, they've been dealing with this for a long time and it's become quite debilitating. So I might start right at the near the bottom, right at the bow with the pubic synthesis. All right, CD3, utmost middle um, or middle pole, right? This is the front move of the bladder. <clears throat> and um, this is also a crossing point of liver, spleen, and kidney. Um, the point's name is said to relate uh, to the importance of the functions of the lower body, such as the fluid creation and elimination processes, right? So how we manage and, and regulate uh, the, um, the fluids, right? Very important point. Um, anything that's going on with the bladder is really good uh, here, right? Um, it's said to help regulate the bladder and the water pathways, but honestly, this is um, one of the points that you can really uh, use, utilize well for uh, urinary tract infections, bladder infections, infections of the urethra. Um, so one of the ways that um, the body eliminates heat is it said is to disinhibit. And what that does is, is it basically that means it um, stimulates urination, right? So one of the things that you may notice already when you were treating your small group patient, your clinic theater patient, was that a lot of times um, patients, as soon as they get up off the table or soon after, really need to go to the bathroom. They really need to urinate. And that's actually a good sign that the body is processing uh, via the chi and eliminating toxins and eliminating anything that's unnecessary. So um, this is a nice point also to combine with some upper CV points, especially 14, the front move of the heart, um, or, the, or CV15, the front move of the pericardium. And this is why. So the heart and the pericardium, if they get too caught up into desiring and their desiring nature, unfulfilled desires, can psychologically generate a lot of pathological heat, which can manifest actually physically um, in uh, symptoms, right? So uh, palpitations, uh, depression, anxiety. And if uh, heat starts to accumulate, one of the things that the small intestine does is it transmits heat from the upper, upper middle jowl down via the deep connecting pathway into the bladder to then be urinated out of the body. So the, the bladder is one of the ways that the body rids itself of toxic heat, physically and psychologically. So this is a great point um, to combine with other CV points when you want to help like flush something out of someone's system uh, by utilizing the bladder.
and that can be for any CF. And all these points can be used on any CF. Again, these are like stage three points, um, which you can support the CF or support the, uh, the organ system that you're focusing on in terms of a primary pattern of disharmony. So CV4, um, we'll, uh, let's see, we'll do a few more and then we'll take a break. CV4, first gate, uh, gate of the original chi. Um, this is the front move point of the small intestine, also a crossing point of the liver, spleen, and bladder. Excuse me, liver, spleen, and kidney, forgive me. Um, this is probably a point, out of all the CV points, this is probably one of three or four that I use the most. This is such a juicy point. This is so phenomenally effective at um, nourishing at a very deep primal level um, people who are very, very like um, dry physically and psychologically. It's very nourishing for the blood. Blood moistens, right? It's it's great for people who are very dry uh, physically and psychologically, as it helps to nourish uh, the organs that help deal with the, um, the body fluids, right? Particularly the spleen. Um, this is great for when there's like, like any, anywhere along the continuum from mild to severe, uh, what we would call yin deficiency, right? Kidney yin deficiency. So tonifying for the kidneys and the kidney jing. Um, and especially when somebody's trying to uh, get pregnant or um, anything that, either physically or psychologically or spiritually is about conception, birth, growth, development, right? Whether that's, uh, you know, trying to bring an actual child into the world or trying to birth or conceive of and then birth and develop some kind of plan or a sense of purpose you have, uh, some great uh, uh, aspiration, right? This is so uh, nourishing for that to moxa as well as needle. And I would really encourage you to moxa this point um, for anybody that does not have tremendously exuberant heat sign, that's okay. All right, let's take a quick note here. <clears throat> All right, um, so this is in the lower jowl. It has a lot to do with blood and to some degree chi. And so this is what roots the spirit, right? We need to be rooted. We need to be grounded in, you know, again, the relationship to the kidneys and the jing, who we are, who we really are, not, you know, who we are in our fantasy mind, our fantasy pictures, right? And it's, to, it's said to like, the helps to nourish the blood to such a degree that it actually roots the hun, right? And provides a resonance. This blood provides a resonance for the hun and the shen, um, which allows us to be present, but also in the lower jowl, right? This is where our power comes from. Um, the lower jowl, all the, uh, or, like the kidneys, you know, this brings us our ability to be powerful in the world. It gives us the resources of blood and chi to be present, right? The blood houses the shen, so we can be fully present to what we need in this life and how to, how to like bear what we need to bear in order to make something beautiful, right? Um, and so it's a great overall point for nourishing the foundations of who we are. So on a physical level, this shows up in a lot of like um, kidney patterns, kidney jing deficiency, kidney yin deficiency, even to some degree kidney yang deficiency, um, kid, you know, kidney chi deficiency, uh, liver blood deficiency, systemic chi and blood deficiency. Such a fantastic point. So nourishing and helps to again, nourish this process of conception, birth, growth, development on any level of the body, mind, spirit. Which brings us to CV5, stone gate or stone door, uh, she men, excuse me. So um, on the left, the character is a stone or a rock or a mineral and the right is a gate, which is an entrance. Again, the men uh, is a, a doorway or a gate from the exterior to the interior. Right, so um, which is different than say a passage, right? Which is maybe an inner door from one room to another. So this has a lot to do with um, that gate between our inner world and outer world. This is also the front move point of the triple heater, which actually helps to uh, regulate and, and create harmony between our exterior and our interior in terms of pressure, 
right, in terms of uh, temperature, <clears throat> in terms of climate, right? So uh, um, stone, a stone field was referred to, like, so this is like, it has a lot to do with stain, stones, so things that are inert, things that don't change, things that don't move. And again, triple heater, especially as a fire official, you know, this helps us to navigate um, the constant changing dynamic dynamics of life. That's hormones, um, temperature, uh, barometric pressure, moods, right? Um, and obviously, as our hormones change, our moods change. So a lot of things that help to regulate the mood can be adjusted by regulating the hormones. And triple, and this is the triple heater. This is the front move of the triple heater of all three jowl, not just the lower lower jowl, which we'll get to at seven. Um, so stone refers to you know a, a barren place, right? also a barrier. So a stone field is where crops don't grow. Um, the nickname stone woman is an is a unfortunate nickname or a pejorative term for an infertile woman, right? So this is, um, and stones are cold, right? So this is a great point to nourish and warm and activate, um, uh, you know, uh, any kind of like sense of physical or psychological barrenness, even spiritual barrenness. Um, Robin asks, would you use it for kidney or bladder stones? Um, which point were you referring to? Stone gate. Um, you know, that's a great question. Um, you know, I hadn't thought about that. I think that's a really interesting idea. I would, I would give it a shot. Uh, you know, stone, Stones, bladder stones, kidney stones are an accretion, uh, an accumulation of uh, of calcium, right? And calcium is cold, and often these stones form when the body is um, dealing with excessive heat, right? Uh, so, you know, related to the triple heater, which regulates the fluid networks to maintain a proper balance of hot and cold. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I would give it a shot. Thank you. That's really nice. I hadn't thought about that. Um, the triple heater is one of the regulators and uh, communicators between the heart pericardium and the world. So this is a nice point where people are feeling like stones. They're feeling inert. They're feeling cold. Uh, they're having trouble maybe connecting and reaching out. And maybe this is like a primal thing. Again, I think about the lower jowl as things that deal with like our primordial stuff, that st things that like develop when we were like um, babies, infants, small children, right? Up until like maybe the age of like uh, seven or eight, you know, our formative years. Um, so maybe, you know, like some people just never been able to f like warm up to people, right? This is a nice point for that. <clears throat> uh, on the physical level, uh, let me just double check my notes here. Yes, it does set to, it is set to regulate the uterus and it's said that needling this point um, can make a woman barren and I can tell you that that is absolutely not true. You're not going to make a woman infertile by needling this point, okay, just to get that out of the way. Uh, quite the opposite. This actually helped bring vitality and blood to help regulate the uterus and the, you know, because blood is the fluid that, regula that helps to regulate the uterus, right? So this is a nice point for that. So don't worry, you're not gonna, you're not gonna make somebody infertile by handling this point. All right, CBG, <laughs> CB6, CFG, I love this name, G, hi, right? Um, so this is, a, this is a, probably also one of the points that I do very frequently on just about everyone at some point, um, you know, unless they're extremely sufficient in chi, which is not a lot of people. This is a phenomenally uh, effective point as a major uh, point of, for chi in the body. This is good for like systemic chi deficiency, not just chi in the lower jowl. And I think it's interesting that it's, a, it's an even numbered point, but it's found in an odd location, right? So it's one and a half sun below the umbilicus, right? So it's, belin, it's between seven and five. Um, so philosophically, uh, the, the, the enumeration of this, you know, six 
is double three, right? So that's um, three times two. So, you know, the CV is yin, that's the two, right? Even numbers are relatively yin, but it's, uh, it's six. It's, it's not just the number three uh, refers to chi. So this is like double chi, right? And it's on this ocean of yin, and but it's also ironically enough, uh, complementarily, uh, if that's a word, uh, deals with chi, which is relatively yang. So um, this is a uh, all this is to say that like in clinical practice, um, when this helps to like kind of transform somebody who's stuck in a very inert place, maybe not so inert as CV five might indicate, but they just like they've got the ideas, they've got some enthusiasm, but they can't really, they just don't have the resources to bring it out, right? Um, you know, they can stand up and bear things, but they can't really then do much more than that, right? So they don't have a lot of energy. This is a great point to moxa when the patient feels cold on any level, because again, chi deficiency is one of the hallmark signs of chi deficiency is cold, feeling cool or cold. This is a fantastic point for, um, things that are descending too much and falling out, again, like CB4, CB3, CB2, really good for prolapses, um, infertility, cold, irregular menstruation. Um, and when I say irregular menstruation, like slow to start, maybe late periods <clears throat> or heavy periods or per heavy periods that are late. Um, excessive urination, ex like uh, excessively frequent urination, dribbling, loose stools, edema, right? The, the chi is what warms and transforms, right? So edema, especially in the lower body that sinks, that's, that's a cold pattern. Um, weakness, depression, physically, uh, psychologically, phenomenal point. Lethargy of the spirit, great point. I often combine this with a lot of other points, also on CV, uh, relating to whatever level or area of the body that's being called upon or a particular official that needs extra support, like I wanna give chi to this official, I often combine it with uh, back shoe points. Really great for chi deficiency of any type. Awesome point to moxa. It's kind of like a, like a hot meal and a long night's sleep after a really like long, exhausting journey through a cold and rainy night. Um, you know, think about how people traveled in the old days. You know, they didn't have a car, they didn't have a shelter. They walked or rode on a horse or a mule of some sort, you know, or a donkey <clears throat> or a, a buffalo, uh, you know. Um, so you're exposed, you know, any kind of traveling, you're exposed. So, you know, in a way, like you're going through the journey of your life and it's like wearing you down, it's making you tired. This is a great point for that. Um, we'll do CB7 and 8, and then we'll take a short break. <clears throat> All right. All right. Just check something here. Sorry, I need to check something. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, sorry about the noise. Okay, so CV7, yin crossing. Um, this is the front move point for the triple heater in the lower jowl. So uh, as every CV point in the lower jowl, it's very nourishing. It's very supportive. It's very grounding on all levels, physical, mental, emotional levels, spiritual levels. Um, thinking about the front move point for the lower jowl, uh, this is a great point to either do by itself or include with other points where there is a lot of cold in the lower jowl, either in the front or in the back of the body. Um, you know, upon palpation, the lower jowl feels very cold. They have a lot of cold signs and symptoms affecting the lower jowl. Um, maybe in terms of, again, as the triple heater helps to regulate the fluid network, um, uh, edema, um, uh, maybe um, 
the blood that's related to the menses is stagnant, right? And, and with concurrent cold signs, right? Not just deficiency signs, but often long-standing cold will lead to deficiency, right? Um, maybe even things like um, uh, low libido for men and women, right? There's no heat down there. You got to get the juices flowing, right? There's not a lot of warmth. There's no passion. Uh, or physically, there's just a lot of cold and stagnation, or stagnation from cold, really, um, which also can come from a simultaneous chi deficiency. So people may actually have a loss of sensation um, in the lower jiao, in the lower body. This is also a way you can combine CB1 and GB1, um, as odd as that may sound. But somebody who just like, they feel a little bit numb uh, in the lower body or in the reproductive areas. You know, not, they don't get much sense of stimulation, right? I don't do this point a whole lot, again, just basically for the reasons I just mentioned, um, where there's a lot of cold and deficiency uh, in the lower jowl. Um, you can also, oh, also, um, like um, accretions, like um, nodules, um, where you palpate and you feel like there's something hard, like some kind of accretion or nodule in the lower jowl, which isn't just along the CV line, but also laterally as well, as far over as like stomach and spleen, right? Um, yeah, urine retention, that's another one that can also be good, right? Regulating the fluids. Um, you can also combine this with the front move point for the bladder as well. Very helpful point. All right, let's look at CV8, okay? Not to be needled. Um, Check something here. All right, so let's talk about CV8. Uh, I'm sure most of you have had this have had this point done. Obviously, you don't needle it. Um, so, uh, spirit deficiency. What is it called? Spirit gateway, right? So obviously this is the gateway via the umbilicus between the mother and child. So um, this is actual like Shen spirit, God, supernatural being. Um, also Shen, I don't know how to pronounce it, Q-U-E. Uh, it's sometimes uh, translated as abode or a watchtower or a palace. So I think that that's interesting. So, um, you know, Shen is the spirit that um, is kind of transmitted almost through the umbilicus, uh, through the umbilical cord, uh, via the fluids in the blood that comes from the mother while the baby is still in utero, in the womb. So Shen is the spirit, and then the QUE, I, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that, um, refers to the watchtower above the gates that protect a city. So I think that that's really interesting. Also, you think about how, in an ideal situation, an ideal world, that the mother is very protective of her child, right? So thus the umbilicus is the entry and exit point for the spirit for the baby coming into the world. So this is obviously their source of nourishment, right? This is the avenue for nourishment to be transmitted to the baby because at that point they're completely and utterly dependent. Again, remember, we need to be balanced dependency with independency, right? So our connection to the eternal unity of the Tao is reflected on a physical level by the umbilicus, and again here, the residue of the umbilicus is right. The you know um, what's there now is the is the um, um, what's left of where the attachment from the umbilical cord, right? So the umbilicus is this place where um, it's like this gateway, right? They even um, in uh, Deadman they refer to it as spirit gateway. So this is like the gateway back to this primordial sense of maternal nourishment, right? to reconnect with the uh, eternal mother, right? The mothering qualities that uh, the earth provides, right? Nourishment, food, everything grows right out of the ground. You know, as I like to joke, I don't have to go to any other planet to get asparagus, right? It grows right here. So to help connect somebody uh, to their, um, to the re reminder that life can be nourishing, right? It helps to remind their spirit that nourishment is indeed available, even if they didn't get what they needed or what they thought they needed or what they would have liked to have received. 
early in life, right? Maybe we didn't have the mother we would have liked. Maybe we didn't have a very nourishing, nurturing or nourishing environment uh, growing up. But we have what we have. And you have yourself now, and there are resources available. So how do you then reclaim and recover those things within yourself and also able to learn how to be dependent on others to get those things too? So we don't, um, you know, because maybe the way of coping as a child was to put up a barrier saying, I don't need anybody. You know, I don't need anything from anybody. I'm going to just do it all myself. Um, and maybe that coping strategy will help for a little bit. But at some point, it's just not going to be effective anymore. It's not that our spirit will end up being barren. We're not going to get the, the harvest that we need and deserve, you know? So um, this is what I often uh, refer to as the mama never loved me point, right? This helps to, to remind us and to get back in touch with the, with the mother energy that is available 24 seven all around us in so many ways. Um, the abundance that is around us, even when we don't feel it. You know, you could be poor in terms of your finances, but there's still a lot of abundance of life, of um, resources that are available on all levels of body, mind, and spirit. Um, we just have to open and receive them, right? So this is also for a person who never really felt held, very supported in life. Um, also that are very uh, like unstable, ungrounded, feeling very deficient, uh, feeling very wobbly in life. Right? This is a phenomenal thing uh, to moxa for them. And you can use either salt or ginger. And I don't mean the ginger that comes with your uh, sushi at the restaurant. I mean like real ginger uh, or an aconite wafer. You can use that as well. Okay. So let's take a short break, like um, five minutes or so, get some tea, uh, you know, a little bio break, and we'll be back at uh, 10.05. Okay, resuming with CB9. Um, now CB9 through 15, this is more about uh, the middle jowl area. This is about processing physically, psychologically, uh, it's about understanding, right? Using the faculties. There's an old saying, as goes the, the belly, so goes the mind, and as goes the mind, so goes the belly. So these are good points to do when people are kind of really locked in their minds. I often combine these with points like stomach eight or other stomach points. Um, I haven't really mentioned it so far, but one of the things you want to consider when doing CV points and GV points is, you know, what other points are at the same level on the other channels. So, you know, with CV, you've got kidney, you've got stomach, you've got spleen, maybe even some degree gallbladder and liver points uh, at various areas. So um, you can tell a lot about what a point does uh, by what are the other points at that level also indicated for doing. You know, what are the actions that are generally indicated at these levels as you move up or down the body, you know, vertically? So, um, you know, you can combine CV points, and I often do, very often do, combine a CV point with, you know, if, uh, if a, a kidney point is applicable or a stomach point or a spleen point is applicable, given the signs and symptoms of what's happening on the physical level, given um, maybe the nature of the mental or emotional level issue, or maybe some aspect of their spirit that also resonates with these other points at that similar level. So. Um, very helpful to combine uh, CB and GB points in this way. Very helpful, very effective. <clears throat> so CB9, uh, water division, water separation. Um, excuse me. Uh, this is really a phenomenal point to do for edema, um, where the physical waters and um, the chi are not getting transformed and transported. Uh, properly, right? This is uh, very much about controlling the water passages um, that promote the uh, movements of the fluids and all that the flu and the functions of the fluids, right? So it deals with the fluidity of our being on a mental level. So water divide refers to where the pure and the impure or the turbid and the clear chi and fluids begin to separate, 
in the body, right? So this is around this, you'd say philosophically, not, this is not exactly literally where the small intestine uh, starts, but this is like um, philosophically where the energies of that begin to play out, right? So this is about the pure aspects of the fluids separating and going to the kidneys and the bladder. And then the impure or turbid fluids are now sent to uh, the large intestine. So <clears throat> this is a great point for any kind of edema uh, due to a spleen and kidney chi deficiency. So obviously there's gonna be signs and symptoms of kidney chi and spleen chi deficiency. And you're also gonna see edema. So this is a fantastic point. Um, Somebody asked earlier uh, about <clears throat> um, like the bloating that occurs with food stagnation and edema. Um, and yeah, you can use all of these points for that as well. Um, I basically choose by palpation or by the area that seems to be affected or by the organ systems that are affected. <clears throat> this is also a great point to do psychologically, spiritually, when people feel very bogged down in life. Right? Um, CB10, lower duct. Um, also called lower cavity. So these are references to the different parts of the stomach, right? <clears throat> and, um, you know, CB10, uh, CB11, CB12, CB13, these all have a lot to do with the, um, the physical level functions of the stomach and the spleen in terms of transformation um, of, of digestion, of the products of digestion. So you know, for 10 through 13, I would say, you know, these are all indicated where you experience, the patients experience a lot of abdominal fullness, especially after eating, or maybe just, you know, uh, throughout the day, <clears throat> they just seem to have a very sluggish digestion. Um, you may feel abdominal hardness, or epigastric pain or discomfort, uh, or even nausea, right? So um, no pleasure in eating. Uh, feelings of cold in this area. So a lot of these points are going to be chosen by virtue of palpation. <clears throat> Sometimes I choose them by virtue of how soon after eating somebody experiences uh, signs and symptoms of stagnation. So maybe just after eating, that would be more around CB13. Uh, a little longer after eating, CB12 and 11. You know, much longer after eating, like a couple hours after eating, CB10. <clears throat> But obviously, palpate these points. Also, look at what are the stomach and spleen points that are at the different levels um, of each of these CB points, like uh, 9, 10 through 13 especially. Right? You can treat these simultaneously. I always start with the CB because I like the idea of stimulating the ocean that then feeds the rivers of the primary channels. So I generally start with CB first. Um, that's generally more systemic. Um, it's more about the C of the yin, right? And then I'll do the kidney or stomach or spleen points second uh, in that same treatment, right? So I'll start with CV points. You can leave it in, especially if there's stagnation. Um, you can sedate it. You can just put it in even technique and retain it. And then uh, after like a minute or two or more, <clears throat> depending on the pulses, you can then, add, or in the timing of your treatment, you can add the other points on stomach and spleen to help move the chi and the fluids through this area um, to deal with any kind of stagnation um, or inability of like the digestive process, the stomach chi to descend, right? So similarly, this helps with very um, um, long-standing mental and spirit level uh, indigestion. Maybe their life is hard for them to digest. A lot of things are going on they don't like. Um, it's hard for them to tolerate. Again, CB is about bearing things, bearing burdens. So maybe life feels like a burden. You know, this isn't the life I want. Um, you know, I'm not experiencing things that are very nourishing for me. And, you know, I get uh, simultaneous, you know, I get, I get some sense of indigestion, maybe after eating, maybe kind of constantly, maybe even nausea, maybe even vomiting, right? I just can't stomach these things that are happening in my life. Uh, or maybe there's parts of, you know, the patient themselves, like some aspects of their own being that they are uncomfortable with, not just uncomfortable, but with dissatisfied with, that feel stuck or maybe burdened by, like maybe their lineage or their appearance, uh, their physical characteristics or some 
tendency or impulse or habit that they have <clears throat> that's hard to bear, that's hard to stomach, that leaves them feeling um, maybe even nauseous. You know, a lot of times you clear up a lot of um, mental level issues uh, and help people integrate, you know, the nature of who they are by virtue of seeing themselves differently, right? Having a different perspective on, you know, who they are, their tendencies, their desires, their impulses, right? That are very primal, that are not about, hey, today I think I'll like the color pink, you know, or I'll like this thing or like that thing, you know, this is things that they're like embodied, these desires, these loves, these likes, these interests, these, um, tendencies, ways of being, right? <clears throat> personal um, idiosyncrasies, like can you learn to love your, your personal quirks, right? But maybe they become, they're in such opposition to uh, this way of being, these characteristics, you know, they consider them flaws. And so uh, sometimes like longstanding nausea, uh, discomfort, no pleasure in eating can be relieved by helping people integrate, you know, uh, and maybe see their inner ways of being um, in a different way where they see how, oh, you know what, actually this can nourish me. This can actually be something that empowers me, right? I think about stand-up comedians are a really great example of how <laughs> they, um, they kind of put all of their flaws and tendencies like right there out on the stage and, and experience like humor from them right? They, they, they laugh at themselves, they laugh at their own nature, because there's a certain part of that that's very uh, communal, that's very universal, right? So, you know, one of the things that, you know, you maybe love about the people that you do love, your family members, uh, your partners, your friends in life, you know, one of the things that makes them special are their weird little quirks, their idiosyncrasies. Um, that can be a lovable part of, of who they are and who we are. So, you know, CV is about integration, right? Taking something in, doing something with it, making it useful and nourishing and getting something nourishing out of, you know, what we're fated to experience, right? So again, you know, CV 10 uh, through 13 are especially useful for this, especially combined with stomach and spleen points. Um, so you basically wanna look at palpation or maybe something about the name of the point or the location or maybe you know where it is in terms of the digestive processes starting from like 13, maybe 14, 13 down to 10. Um, these are all great ways of choosing these points. Um, you know, uh, again, you can also combine it with points in the upper jaw where people are kind of like, I've had it up to here, I can't stomach anymore. Um, great points for that. So I'm just gonna go briefly through 11, 12, and 13, because <clears throat> again, these are very similar. You can look at the, at the stomach points that are in the same level. So stomach 23 is at the same level of CV10. Stomach 22 uh, is at the same level as established mile, inner strength, um, strength in the interior, right? This is um, a nice point, uh, CV11, to ease the constraint of chi uh, stagnation that's often coming from excessive heat in the local area. Right, so the point may actually feel hot to the touch, or that area may feel warm uh, or hot. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Oh wait. Um, so Robin asks, uh, would you combine that point with triple heater points? Which which point? Um, the water division point, CV nine. Yes, I would definitely combine that with uh, triple heater points that have a lot to do with the regulation of fluids, in particular, which CV point would be determined by which uh, jowl I'm having trouble uh, with the fluid regulation. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I just, I only just now saw it. All right, so CV11, this refers to the regulation between the stomach and the triple heater. Um, this helps to regulate the stomach tree, stomach chi and, um, I use this a lot when there's a lot of rebellious stomach chi causing uh, like heart palpitations, uh, a fullness in the chest. Um, this is really a really nice point about like helping someone really get the essence uh, from what they're eating and drinking. Again, a lot of this is by palpation or by relationship to um, you know the stomach point that it refers to. Here, um, this refers to stomach 22. 
right? Which is um, uh, pass gate, Guan Men, right? Um, so, you know, maybe you're palpating around that area and stomach 22 is tender. So you could combine this point, you know, with that. Uh, really nice point for that. <clears throat> um, stomach 12, boy, this is like, you know, another one of those desert island points. Um, this is uh, at the same level as stomach 21 beam gate. Uh, this is the front move point for the stomach. The stomach is said to be uh, the, um, the uh, the uh, that which dominates the foo, right? It's uh, it's the it's it, the stomach uh, official is said to be that which dominates all the foo. So basically, all of our post heavenly chi, that is everything that all the chi that we get after we're born by virtue of what we eat, drink, and breathe, um, can be supported uh, by by the stomach, and in particular this point, which said you know is to be the front move point. For the stomach now, in a lot in a lot of TCM, they don't really needle the front move points, um, and even in five element acupuncture, you know, it's usually mostly on like diagnosis. But um, I find that they're very powerful to treat with needle and moxa um, in any issue that deals with uh, the person's ability to integrate um, nourishment on a body, mind, spirit level. So that might have to do with their ability to digest their food and drink or to gain maybe a better intuitive sense of what they should eat and drink. This is a great point, I think, for that. Uh, I incorporate this in a lot of treatments and I talk to patients about this, about, um, you know, a lot of times they just don't know what to eat and drink. And a lot of decisions that what people decide, a lot of decisions people make about what they eat and drink are based on their conditioning. Well, this is what I had growing up or this is what I find flavorful and tasty, this is what I crave. But you know, what if what you crave and what you grew up eating is not good for you? And a very good friend of mine, you know, um, and his parents are you know, pretty aware people. They're not, um, and very educated people. Uh, <clears throat> and you know, he grew up and a lot of time, and they ate a lot of like um, breads and carbs, and turns out he has a tremendous insensitivity to gluten. And he thought it was just normal to feel awful after eating most of the time. Like he thought, well, this is just what most people feel. And until he was like, later on when he moved to Korea, he was a martial artist and he studied, uh, I think it was, I can't remember what he studied, like Jin Jitsu or something like that. It was similar to Taekwondo. But anyway, he was living in Korea and they don't eat a lot of carbs. Um, you know, they have like buns for dessert and things like that, but you know, like, rice noodles, things like that. You know, they certainly eat a lot of like, there's a wide variety of wheat noodles, but he was eating a lot of rice noodles because that's the people he was staying with ate a lot of rice noodles and he had a lot of rice and he wasn't eating a lot of other carbs. And he was like, man, I feel great. I feel great. <laughs> and so uh, he realized, you know, when he moved back to the States, he, he got, uh, he basically went through some kind of exam. They discovered, decided he had like this severe gluten allergy. Um, so, you know, um, I think that there's some, you know, like your gut sense about what is digestible for us in terms of the body, mind, and spirit. So not just what you eat and drink, but what you think about, what you focus your shen on, what you put your, what you focus your chi towards, um, you know, your beliefs, you know, uh, what do you believe? Do they, do they, are you able to feel nourished by your beliefs? Do they sit in your gut well? You know what I mean? Do they, do they make you feel good on a gut level? And if not, you know, you need to reconsider them or maybe modify your relationship to them, right? So this is a great point for that on the body, mind, spirit level. Um, this is often a point that I'll combine with uh, liver 13, which is the front move point for the spleen. Um, anytime, especially there's a lot of physical stagnation, fullness, bloating, nausea, upset uh, in this area. Phenomenal combination of points to treat. It's honestly, it's, it's great to add for all stomach and spleen problems as a supporting point. <clears throat> and I often combine this with stomach 21 when there's a lot of indigestion, uh, uh, especially after eating. Um, quick story about this point. Um, I was uh, at the beach with my dad. 
this was like right after graduating and we had gone out to eat and I think we were eating some kind of seafood or something and something didn't agree with him, maybe like some scallops or something. I think they were undercooked. Uh, and I do sedate, <clears throat> excuse me, I do sedate liver 13 and CD12 or I'll just put it in evenly. It's, it's very uncommon for me to tonify those points unless I'm doing liver 13 for some other reason, for some other um, uh, patron of the point, maybe for like some virtue of the name like chapter gate you know, we're starting a new chapter in someone's life. But if there's a lot of uh, symptoms of stagnation and stasis, then I'll sedate. So uh, he was feeling really lousy. And so I was palpating around and I did stomach 21 and CD12 and I sedated. And within about like 10, 15 minutes, uh, he felt a lot of ease of pressure. It was a lot of bloating. <clears throat> the bloating eased up. <clears throat> and then I think in about 15, 20 minutes, <clears throat> he felt pretty good, got up immediately got up, moved his bowels and felt great. So that's my CV 12 stomach 21 story. Okay, so CV 13, uh, this is in alignment with um, the level of uh, stomach 20, uh, supporting fullness. Again, great point for people who feel bloating, uh, nausea, fullness right after eating. Um, this is a great point to help the stomach chi to descend so people can uh, digest and assimilate uh, their food much better. Um, let's see, this is a nice point I do uh, for people who, um, as well as CB12, uh, again, palpate for deciding which one is best. Uh, this is a great point for people who really disown a lot of their own neediness. Um, you know, people who don't wanna receive from others. Uh, this is a nice point for that. Okay. Just checking in on something here. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, based on palpation and generally how soon after eating somebody feels bloating or nausea uh, or counterflow chi, um, 13, 12, 11, great for rebellious chi, uh, regurgitation, um, what's that, acid reflux, GERD, phenomenal points for them. <clears throat> in terms of acid reflux and GERD, though, I found this point in particular, just by virtue of experimentation and practice, this has been, to me, the most effective point. Uh, to include uh, in point combinations that I'm doing for acid reflux and GERD. Just such an awesome point for that. All right, so CB14, uh, great deficiency. Let's see. Great gateway uh, is what um, uh, Deadman calls it. Uh, this is the front move point for the heart. Um, Again, it's a similar deficiency, I believe, as in CV8. I'm going to look at the character here. Um, yes, yes, it's the same. It's the same QUE that I can't pronounce, right? So again, there's this sense of a watchtower as we're moving um, down into the middle jowl from the lower jowl, uh, from the upper jowl into the middle jowl. <clears throat> and if you think about the heart, also as um, the mediator between heaven and earth, right? Um, when you look at also like a uh, supernatural tower, GB10 on the back, you know, there's this sense of like um, awareness that leads to protection, right? Because you can't protect if you're not watching over something, right? And so this is a phenomenal point that I do in combination with other points, either uh, stomach 19 or, um, uh, any point that I'm doing like on a heart or pericardium, where we're dealing with heart issues around uh, vulnerability, heart issues around um, inability to settle. So this is a great point to combine when I'm treating people for heart-related insomnia or heart spleen chi uh, uh, blood or chi related deficiencies that lead to insomnia. Um, this is you know, more direct support for the heart official itself. You can also combine it with bladder 15 the back shoe point for the heart. Um, Any time where the heart or on a body, mind, spirit level 
is very qi deficient or blood deficient. You can also combine this, uh, especially with moxa, with the outer bladder line point um, at the level of the heart. So with um, that's uh, 39 in Worsley and 44, I believe, in Deadman. Uh, maybe a point a person a patient is experiencing a, a real deficit or a drought of meaningful interaction and contact contact you know this would be a nice point actually to guide people to um, massage and meditate on uh, and imagine like this is some of the things that I've been doing virtually with patients is I um, you know we have a brief conversation via zoom like what we're doing now and then I have them um, physically touch <clears throat> certain points and then I lead them through a guided meditation, which is basically, you know, description of what the point does, you know, and just, um, again, CV is about receiving, it's about nourishing. So, you know, your meditation or, or intention could be about helping the patient open to receive the gifts that are given by and carried in the heart, right? Which is a, ironically, a sense of emptiness, right? So can you experience a lightness of being and a sense uh, from what nourishes you, right? Physically, uh, the food and drink that you take in, um, the experiences that you take in, right? We eat our life, you know, can you be nourished at the heart level? Um, you know, sometimes we have, again, we don't like the, the life we've been given. It's a burden that we feel like it's unfair or too much, or not tasty at all. Like, you know, this is not the delicious life that I felt I was promised. You know, this is, this is leaving a bad taste in my mouth, right? Again, you think about the, the heart opening to the world via the tongue. So maybe they have a, like a bad taste in their mouth from their life. Maybe their life is punctuated by, you know, an inability to say things, to speak, to form words that are beautiful that are nourishing. So maybe they have a lot of bitterness in their life. Again, bitterness, flavor of the fire. Um, you know, maybe they have a hard time speaking positive words. You know, they have a hard time uh, engaging in positivity or positive conversations. You know, they find themselves always going into complaint, um, how hard things are. And again, we need to communicate and speak these things to get them off our chest. Again, this is like near the border between the, the upper and the middle jiao <clears throat> and the gao huang area, right? The throne uh, between the heart uh, and the stomach that the heart sits on, right? So this is really good for um, dealing with uh, unsatis dissatisfaction, unfulfilled, excuse me, unfulfilled desires, uh, you know, maybe um, bringing back uh, a sense of passion for what they do have around them and maybe seeing the resources that they have available to them in different ways. I remember sitting around one day in college <clears throat> and uh, I was kind of complaining that uh, about the band that I was in. I didn't really like, you know, the direction that the, cre the creative direction that the, uh, this other band wanted to go into. And I was actually like, you know, with about five of my friends and in the, in the period of about five, 10 minutes, <clears throat> we realized that one person could sing, one person wanted, was, was just starting to learn to play guitar, another person had an interest in the bass, um, but just was kind of like dismissed it, and, um, and then another person uh, has a basement that we could use to practice in, so bam, we had, we had a band right there, uh, and they, they were all right there in the same room, you know, so that's, and it was actually a really wonderful experience uh, playing music with these people. We, we created a lot of really good stuff and even played out and, you know, um, uh, so it was a really nourishing experience for me. Um, but I had to vocalize this complaint, but in a way that also opened to possibility uh, that held the promise of nourishment. So, you know, uh, it's fine to complain. It's fine to, you know, bitch and moan a little bit, but we also have to have limits and we don't want to get like so lost in it that it becomes a burden and makes us stagnant. We want to maybe bring a complaint out, but with the possibility that this can lead to something that's eventually nourishing for me, something satisfying for me, All right? So this is a great point to do for that. Um, and anything that's, you know, uh, a burden on the heart, whether it's a physical burden, you know, congestive heart failure, 
or uh, an emotional, psychological burden, or a spiritual burden. Maybe you're born into a family or a religion or a culture that's really hard for you to bear, right? So this helps to gain uh, some clarity, some emptiness, right? We wanna move the stagnation, move the fluids, move uh, the stagnant blood, uh, move the stagnant chi, right? Again, chest oppression, feeling tight or tense, to uh, create some openness, some breathing room, some relaxation to settle the shen, right? Because if it's chronic, it can be very agitating and it can be very worrisome. Maybe it impacts our sleep. You know, we dwell on it. Again, that's a sign of stagnation. So this is a great point for all of those things. All right. Any questions so far? Can you all still hear me okay? Just type yes if you can. Yes. Cool. All right, great. Hey, Tom, I hear you. Great, thank you. Okay, CD15 dovetail. Um, so the point name uh, refers to uh, the physical landscape of this resembling a, a, a specific type of bird's tail. Um, I think of also the, uh, you know, the xiphoid process that sticks down like this little tail that, you know, comes from the body of the bird. You want to needle this point shallowly for some patients. Uh, the left lobe of the liver or a person's enlarged heart might be directly underneath this. Um, it's uh, probably not a point you're ever really going to ever <laughs> uh, needle so deeply that you're going to puncture the liver or the heart, but you know, just to be mindful. And also the chi of this point is very available near the surface. Uh, let's see, one of you said, when I was diagnosed with a heart block, these points were very powerful, prevented me from needing a pacemaker. Fantastic. Well, that's great. That's great. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and I th also combine these points for like heart blocks, especially like AV heart blocks, uh, atrial ventricular heart blocks, or electrical issues affecting the heart. I would almost always combine these with um, uh, GV points and um, the bladder shoe point of the heart, maybe even the outer bladder line point on the heart, because um, if you think about the electrical system and the nervous system, that resonates a lot with the bladder uh, and the bladder channel. So um, electrical problems with the heart, you know, heart regulatory rhythm that's um, not so much chi related, uh, but could be chi related. Um, that is, there's not enough strength in the heart. Um, but also there's a, a poor timing of the heart. So irregular heartbeats, things like that. Uh, very useful uh, to combine CV14, 15, or just 14 with um, GV points and uh, inner and outer bladder line points. All right, so CV15, phenomenal point um, for uh, supporting any aspect of the pericardium that's needing support. Um, you know, it's said to regulate the heart and calm the spirit. Uh, 14, 15, 16 are helped to, uh, said to help descend the lung chi. So um, I would say these are points that are really phenomenal to include when somebody's dealing with anxiety that affects the breath, that affects a sense of tightness in the chest, right? It unbinds the chi, it unbinds the chest. It means it gets the chi and the blood circulating through that area. Right, so phenomenal point to include, especially to moxa, uh, when someone um, has anxiety, uh, upset, uh, or they experience emotions so intensely that it affects the, that they get tight in the chest, it might affect their breathing, they might get short of breath, they might feel a lot of tension in this area, or they might get like, you just look at them and they're talking about what they're talking about, and they're kind of like hunched over and hunched in, you know, and you, you see them going to the, like the state of tension and collapse. So this, combined with other points on the extremities, can help open the chest, relax the chest, <sighs> facilitate breathing, which in itself, as we all know, like the box breathing or the five, seven, eight breathing is a, a, a great way of um, <clears throat> you know, relaxing the person, helping them become more um, stable uh, in the presence of an anxiety attack, something like that. <clears throat> um, and any, uh, physical or emotional issue uh, affecting the pericardium. So this could be something like um, uh, feeling very vulnerable in the world physically as well as uh, emotionally. Um, 
maybe physically feeling weak and vulnerable, you know, recuperating from an illness, uh, loss of strength, maybe even like they've had some kind of accident, they lost a lot of blood, people can feel very um, physically vulnerable, um, as well as fearful. Uh, maybe even like low libido, uh, little passion for, for, um, for literal lovemaking or sex, literal, like uh, very little passion for anything in life. They feel very depressed, right? This is the point you can also combine with, say, points on pericardium and liver, right? Um, that help to uh, tonify and strengthen one's, you know, passion for life. Right, especially in uh, signs and symptoms of what are called we call in the West depression. Right, there's a, there's no sense of arousal, right, and which is moderated by the circulation of blood, which circulates the shen. Right, so um, this also helps to stimulate a sense of emotional ruggedness. Um, you know, people that are very easily upset, offended, uh, feel violated emotionally, psychologically. Um, you know, someone says, uh, interesting drawing, you know, you're showing them your, your drawing and they say, interesting drawing. And you're like, oh my God, they hate it. It's awful. Like they're, you know, you get really upset and defensive and uh, you feel, oh my God, this is like, what an insult, uh, you know, or very self-deprecating or, def or um, you feel easily offended, right? And the person was just like, interesting drawing. Um, so this is really great for people who are like, very sensitive uh, psychologically, emotionally, uh, and also to help um, buoy uh, the sense of um, like physical stability, a uh, strong sense of you know physical integrity, right? Um, low libido, um, yang type problems in the chest where there's a sense of over excitation where you feel like the chi rush up into the chest, right? This helps to bring the chi along with the lung chi down and to help relax the body, okay? Um, CB16, middle hall, and then we'll take a short break after this one. Um, this is probably one of my most go-to points for people who have been diagnosed in the West with anxiety, maybe even taking anxiety meds. Um, this is such a great point to help the patient settle and relax settle into themselves. It's um, just below uh, that notch, right? It's at the midline of the sternum at that uh, sternocostal angle, I think it's called, right? At the top of the xiphoid, just at the bottom of the sternum. Um, this is obviously a point you don't have to needle deeply. Uh, I treat um, a lot, I don't know why, a lot of people come to see me for anxiety. I treat a lot of athletes and you'd be surprised at how many uh, athletes uh, suffer from tremendous anxiety, um, you know, the pressure to perform, the pressure to excel, uh, to be better, you know, they've got a lot of their own shen invested into this, their own identity invested in this. Um, and sometimes they, they're on such a, a, like, autopilot about it, that they don't even stop to think, like, why am I doing this? Um, you know, how is this nourishing for me? Like, what's, what do I actually get out of this? Like, what, you know, what's the why in all of this, um, not just the what. So um, this is a really nice point to help bring in a sense of um, ease, uh, a sense of um, relaxation, uh, to settle the mind, to settle the body, you know, when they feel very agitated, also physically um, riled up, you know, on this, uh, like they, they just feel very intense. Uh, it's hard for them to just kind of like settle in and take in the moment. Um, this is really good for, uh, especially with moxa and needle, to help like, whew, yeah, okay. Right, remember who you are. Remember who I am. Okay. And I combine this a lot with points, uh, again, also on the back, bladder 14, bladder 15, the outer bladder line points, maybe even GB points like GB 14, GB 20. You can also combine this with lower jowl points. Um, lower kidney points, right? Like, you know, like, what am I really about in this life? And what do I really want to manifest, right? Using the resources that I have at my disposal. <clears throat> All right. So let's just take a uh, short break. Um, maybe like uh, till about, uh, maybe like seven minutes till about five of or so. 
Now let's, uh, yeah, let's just do about like five, six minutes. Hey, beloved. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, physically, again, this is also a great point to clear phlegm, especially from the throat uh, when there's a lot of um, phlegm, like this person gets like a tickle in their throat and that stimulates them to cough. This is a great point to combine with other points uh, to help calm rebellious lung chi. Um, CD22, which is on the throat, this is a window of the sky point and all windows of the sky points um, help basically free people from the prison of their own perspective. Uh, CB20 can be useful in treating pneumonia or other lung congestion issues. Yes. Um, any like CB20, 21, 22, uh, especially com combined with like lung 5, uh, bladder 12 and 13 on the back. Um, yeah, those can all be useful. Maybe even like lung 2, lung 1. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, so as a window of the sky point, you know, uh, as, it, as a point that helps free people from the prison of their perspectives, their historical perspectives, habitual ways of looking at things, ways, habitual ways of reacting to things. Um, now this is on CV. So again, this is gonna be flavored with the qualities that relate to the CV, which is, you know, how do you bear the burdens of life? How do you experience, um, life is nourishing, how do you get the resources you need to take care of this on a body, mind, spirit level? And so this is a great point also for, um, maybe even combined with stomach nine, another window of the sky point, or points on lung uh, to help empower one's voice. Again, it clears a lot of phlegm and, and stuckness in the throat. Um, this is also good for empowering the chi of the voice. So you know, on a physical level, weak voice, a thin voice, wheezing, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, a loss of voice, uh, especially when people are ill or people have like issues going on with their lungs that might show up as a loss of voice. And then on a mental spirit level, you know, have, has the patient lost their ability to speak what's essential to them, right? Think about the lungs. You know, this is about one's essential nature, one's essential principles and values. Can you speak this? Is there something getting in the way of that? Is there some obstacle? So on a physical level, that could be phlegm, uh, dampness, uh, post-nasal drip, uh, or chi deficiency. Like, uh, you know, um, like I've been beaten down by life. I've been beaten down by the burdens that I've had to bear. Uh, illnesses, uh, challenging situations, right? So this is a great point um, to empower the voice, empower the throat, and to rectify any rebellious lung chi signs or symptoms, right? Wheezing, asthma, shortness of breath, coughing, <clears throat> um, any kind of uh, excess pattern, like a lot of heat in the throat, which dries out the fluids, which creates more phlegm, but also can create a lot of dryness and irritation, uh, sore throat, uh, burning sensations in the throat, um, plum pit chi, right? So uh, especially with the sense of dryness or sore throat that comes with like wind heat, uh, especially if there's like a Wei Qi deficiency, you can combine this with bleeding uh, um, lung 11 um, to release a lot of heat uh, and toxic heat in the throat. Great point for that. 23, I don't really do much. Um, this is said to be a good point for saliva dryness problems. Um, Excess, or on the other side, excessive drooling in addition to dry mouth. I don't really, I can't remember the last time I've used this point. You can try it out, see if it works for you. Uh, it's said to clear a lot of heat and fire out of the throat. I've found other points to be better, like the ones I just mentioned, to be better for that. It's said also to dispel internal wind um, that's drying out the throat and maybe help uh, transform phlegm that's stuck in the throat. Again, I don't really use it very much. Receiving fluid, I use this a little bit more. This one's here. It's a reunion point with the stomach and the large intestine, uh, as well as GB. Um, so this is a phenomenal point, receiving fluid. Um, let's see, Deadman calls it container of fluids, 
right? Because the mouth is the container of the saliva. So this is great point to combine with some other points to stimulate uh, fluids in the mouth when somebody has very dry mouth, especially after taking certain medications or after um, intensive therapies like chemotherapy, radiation, things like that. Um, powerful Western medical drugs can dry the, the mouth and the throat. Um, so this is really great for enhancing, flu enhancing fluidity on all levels, right? We also need to be fluid and juicy to receive, right? So, um, you know, this is a really good point for uh, dryness on any level of the body, mind, spirit. And um, it's also said to expel wind that's invading the face, causing paralysis and numbness. Um, I haven't had a lot of luck with that, thinking about like after a stroke or Bell's palsy. I've used it, I'm not sure how much good it did, because um, sometimes I'll do points one at a time and like maybe wait 30 seconds to a minute, uh, check the pulse, see if the person has any sensation of anything, so I make sure I definitely get the chi. You don't want to needle it too deeply, you don't want to go through uh, the skin into the gum, because um, that can be a little bit painful. Uh, but it it is when stimulated, um, and when I stimulate it, I actually, when I needle it, I'll, I'll wiggle it a little bit to get that chi for a good 10 to sometimes even 30 seconds. Now, if I'm doing it for 30 seconds, I'm manipulating it very, a very little bit. So I'm not generating too intense a da chi sensation. So it's a little bit more of a, a da chi sensation. I mean, more of a gentle, um, almost like a gentle pressure or a gentle warmth or a spreading sensation, maybe even slight pressure, but I don't want to get that like intense zing, uh, you know, that for, you know, stimulating certain points that are especially good for like, you know, helping to stimulate, you know, the, the muscles uh, to activate or to relax. So this would be much more gentle and this can uh, help to generate fluids for people with a very dry mouth, right? I think of it as like, um, uh, like envisioning a really ripe, juicy peach or pear, you know? That's what I sort of send through my heart and my hand is uh, with my intention. All right, um, any last questions uh, before we finish? Okay. All right. So I will be um, recording the rest of the um, Meridian uh, Point Lectures uh, this weekend. And then um, the final be will be posted very soon. Uh, I'm going to give a very merciful final. <laughs> very merciful. Uh, and with directions on how to hand that in. <clears throat> I know you guys are dealing with a lot. You're navigating a lot. You're adjusting to a lot. I really appreciate that. Um, so uh, I'm going to try and uh, be as easy on you as I can, um, knowing that uh, this is, uh, you know, everything is shifted. You know, our reality has shifted and our uh, daily experiences have shifted and your educational experiences have shifted. But I do also need to make sure that, um, you know, that we can demonstrate that you've uh, participated in the course and are you know, hopefully receiving the, uh, the benefits of the outcomes and objectives. So um, look for those. I will get back to you uh, at the latest Saturday night uh, for um, directions about how to proceed for the rest of the course. And then um, if not Saturday, then Sunday, I'll have the rest of GV recorded. Again, probably about an hour's worth. And then you also have the heart-mind lecture that will help make up for some of the missed course. Um, and the final will be a similar format uh, to the midterm. Yes, very similar. Um, hope you're enjoying this. I know it's not the same as a personal transmission, but you get to be at home in, uh, in your own space. So, you know, perhaps that's something. Uh, again, it's as always, I